What's up guys, welcome to today's video. Today, what we're gonna be focusing on is a, a longer men's cut. Uh, could also be translated into a, a women's cut. We're gonna be doing it with a razor, so that's exciting as well. And we'll throw some scissor work in there as well, because I don't like to just do one haircut with one tool. I wanna section this off a little bit in the FSE digital haircutting basic sectioning. So we'll go through here. I'm gonna go from the bridge of the nose. So we'll go here, center part, we're going to separate front and back. So we separate side to side, and now we're gonna separate front and back by working down to the hairline. Those of you guys that follow my content, you know this is basically how I section everything. So here's the line. So you can see it goes straight up from the hairline. Now some people's hairlines go back a little bit. That's fine, you really just wanna get the majority of this density in the back section and then the majority of that density in the front section. Now, separate the other side. So now we've separated front and back. We got the front, we have the back. I'm gonna start by cutting in the back. And the reason I'm choosing to use a razor on this is because I want everything to fall nice and soft. As we work through it, we've got our vertical section here, and then we're going to work a pie-shaped section, but taking a big piece of the pie first. So I wanna go all the way over to the hairline about an inch up. The reason I'm working with the razor is I wanna create a soft line. If this guy goes in uh, to style his hair and he doesn't put a bunch of effort into it, I want it to still fall nice. And the way that it's gonna fall nice is having razored lines or nice shattered lines as opposed to really blunt, perfect layers throughout a cut. Got my pie shape section here. I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. When I always talk about working interior out, Sometimes I like to go baseline and up. And this is one of those cases because he's going to be wearing this hair sometimes back off his face, sometimes forward. I really wanna pick his length to start. And because I'm using a razor, his length won't be so blunt. So I'll be able to remove quite a bit of weight and really pick that length right from the get-go. So we go here, bring this hair down, finger elevation. I don't want too much elevation in it. And then I've got my 100% cutting side, and I'm just gonna softly work through. Not a ton of pressure on the section, because the more pressure, the more blunt this line gets. The softer you go, the softer this line gets. And that is what I'm personally going for. And just a heads up to you guys, I'm standing to the side of my work here, but in the salon, I'd be standing directly behind it so I could visually see it. So that's the first part of that cut. Now, when I go from here, I can then flip the tri-razor and go 25 texture and just slide halfway down this section to add a little more texture and remove a little bit more weight. This is one of the coolest parts about this tool is just being able to rotate it and create even more texture into the haircut. So that's my length. Now I'm gonna continue, just going straight up. Let's go two inches at a time. So I'm gonna go two inch section up, diagonal forward parting over to the hairline. The beauty of working in the back of the head, every section as I move up is all working within the same density. And I, I, tr I really try to explain this every single class that I do. If I were to grab this hair and pull it into this section and cut it the same as I cut the back, it's gonna be a lot weaker in the front. I wanna keep that strength in the front. I wanna treat the front like a separate haircut, like I'm cutting a totally different head. So we'll go through the back, we're gonna work our way all the way up, and then I'll go into the front. This is a very simple part of using the tri-razor. So we're gonna go vertical all the way across the back, vertical section, bring it out. And now I've got that underneath so that it starts to fall. That can be your guideline if you want. I'm gonna go a little bit past that, and then I'm going to slide the tri-razor down. Then I'm gonna take another vertical section, so bring that, bring section one over to section two. Where section one is, that becomes my guideline. I wanna travel across the head, creating this balanced line here. So I want everything to come out to this point. If I take section two, which is here, and I pull it over to section one. When I let go, when I cut section one and I brought it over here, I over-directed it. Once you over-direct it and cut it there, it's longer than section one is. So now my line goes from wanting to be a balanced line, which is my goal, to then being 
more of a clothesline where I push weight towards the front, right? So I need to make sure instead of bringing two over to one, I bring one over and meet section two sort of in the middle, basically over top of section two. So I'll scoop underneath like this, bring the hair over. I can see the guide and then I cut. All right, so now we cut section one, we've cut section two. Now we're gonna move to section three, right? And as we move to section three, I now leave section one alone, bring two over to three. So section two says, see you later section one, drops him off at home, goes to pick up section three at his house. Let's keep this out underneath. Try razor, cut. Section two, section three, hung out for a little bit. And now section three is like, see you later section two, I'm gonna go see section four. But section four wants to meet section three a little closer to his house. They both have bikes, right? So section four, I wanna pull straight back as opposed to rounding the corner. I want this to be a balanced line because we're working on a round right here. If I take three and I pull it over to four, four is sitting on a round. So now I start to round this line off. I want to keep a balanced line. So four needs to meet three. I'll scoop it, but then I'll pull four over to three just a little bit. And they'll meet halfway in between each of their houses. So you can see nice layered haircut going on. I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. So nice layered long effect. So I say balanced because this to me is just balanced with my shoulders. It's parallel to my shoulders, parallel to the wall, and it's working this balanced line across the head. Let's continue on. Okay, so now we're gonna go two more inches up, really just capturing that crown area on this section, comb this hair down, and we're gonna do the same exact thing. So put your Uber driver hat on. We got section one here. This is a fun little trick too, I'll show you guys. If you want to add the texture as you go, bringing one over to two, and watch this. If I take the 25 texture side, and I go here first and cut, now I've removed 25% from the mid shaft to ends, and now I can just go through the ends and take the rest of it at uh, 100. So that's creating that texture as you go. So now I'll grab two, bring two over to three. So 25 texture, mid shaft to ends and then slide out and then add in the 100% through. Now we grab four and we keep it balanced or square, bring it back, still texture, rising, and then the 100. So now, not every section is created equal, right? Now I'm in this little bit of the crown and I want this to lay a little bit different. I don't want it to lay perfectly heavy off to the side. So I don't want to create a balanced layer. Also, um, the head really starts to curve around here. So for me, I want to follow that. So I'm going to go one here, connect it to the bottom, two, three, two, three, right around the top. It'll be nice and quick. I do want to get a higher elevation. I don't want to keep all this down here. If I do that, it just gets a little bit heavy, but the beauty of a razor is this would also give me extra length. So I'm gonna go in between. I don't wanna go too layered, too short on the top. Using that 25 texture will remove some of that weight. So then I can do a little bit bigger passes with the razor. The heavier stroke you do back and forth, the more of a light line that you're creating. Bring the section back, 25 texture, get some of that weight out of there and then move through it. 25 texture. There's little bits here that are longer that I personally really love. And that comes from cutting it balanced. If I went rounded, this would be short. You wouldn't have this little flare out of hair. So I wanna do the same thing over here, just to connect the top. And with this cut, you don't have to be so perfect with it. Obviously you want it to have a purpose. Once I get my client to this point, I'm gonna start combing their hair, the front hair into the back, and just kind of see how that length reacts that they currently have. And what I like to do is just move diagonal back 
and cut open off the face because most of these guys are not going to wear it towards their face with it this long. I'm going to switch to scissors for this next portion because what I want to do is I want to work diagonal back and it'll just be quicker for me and I can use point cutting to get a certain effect and we'll be good. So here we go, diagonal back, elevate the hair and I'm going to point cut straight out from the head. So we'll call this basically getting it at 90 degrees. And I just continue through just like that. You should have your bottom point from the back of the head. So you just come through here, point cut, comb up, follow that parting, bringing all this hair up. What is this doing? Pushing extra length towards the bottom, adding layers to the top, pushing length to the bottom. Once I get to the parietal ridge in this area here, this curve, so once I get to that portion of the head, everything kind of becomes stationary. So I travel across and then stationary up to this point. It will create length to the bottom. And once I get that cut, then I can go in and just have some fun, add a little more texture with my tri razor. So now just being able to go through, take a little bit of this hair and honestly add texture wherever the heck you want. And if I see a little bit of weight, I come in here, 25 texture. And this, honestly, this little trick can be on anybody's hair. You start moving hair around, you got a heavy piece in your face frame, um, you see anything throughout the cut that you're doing, and you just go in there, 25 texture, you're not removing too much hair ever, and it can just really lighten it up nice. And that's all from over directing it all the way up to the top, cutting it, and then letting that length just be what it was. Sometimes you gotta go in and take out a little bit. Now I'm going to style. So I'm just gonna wet his hair down a little bit again. And then I'm gonna go with one of my new favorite products, grooming cream. Easy hold definition isn't too much, too extreme. So I put that in my hand. So I work this through and this literally makes your hair feel like you're day two. And a lot of guys, but you're not day two and it's not dirty. Um, and you can have hold all day. You can move your hair around and it's gonna look good. Hope you guys enjoyed this haircut. One of my favorite longer men's haircuts. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Become part of my Patreon if you wanna rewatch all the classes I've ever done and also have access to all the great things like the FSC digital haircutting system. It's patreon.com slash Matt Beck. We'll try to post it right here uh, in the final video. So patreon.com slash Matt Beck. Go there, become part of the community. 